This video is made possible by my game bundle. Play 7 awesome games and help support the channel. Get the Steam game bundle at unitycodemonkey.com slash gamebundle. In this video, I'm going to tell the story about the time that I launched my very first PC game 7 years ago. The game was Survivor Squad, which was a strategy action game that still to this day I think it's mechanically very interesting. I'm telling my story in the hopes of inspiring you by showing how we all start from nothing. Let's begin! So all the way back in 2012 was when I finally decided that I wanted to make a complete desktop PC game. I covered my entire game dev journey in another video, and if you've seen that video then you know that was the point that I transitioned away from Flash and into PC game development. In December of 2012 I started looking at how I could possibly make a PC game, which is how I eventually came upon Unity. For design I wanted something that was mouse heavy, so I was looking for a design that really made use of the PC as a platform, and that design eventually ended up becoming Survivor Squad. Still to this day I think it's a really cool game with some really interesting mechanics. It's definitely not very polished and very clunky at times, which clearly shows that it was my very first game. But mechanically speaking, I think it still holds up today, especially the sequel, Survivor Squad Gauntlets, which features the same base mechanics with a ton more polish. So I started working on what eventually became Survivor Squad all the way back in December of 2012. And six months later, in May of 2013, was when it finally came out. So that was a really interesting time. I was really pleased with what I built, I learned a ton and I finally had made a complete proper PC game. I played it in full screen and it worked exactly as I imagined. So in that sense, I was definitely feeling very good about it. Especially in retrospect, since now I know that about 90% of people who start making games never actually finish them. So the fact that I started and completed the game over the course of 6 months was definitely a great thing. However, in order for it to become a job, it also needed to make money. And well, that's where the problems came in. Now back then, Steam already had Greenlight. It was actually announced about one year earlier, and the announcement of Greenlight is one of the main things that first planted the seed in my head that I could make a PC game. Before Greenlight, essentially you needed to know someone. So for me, as a random kid living in Portugal, obviously I didn't have any connections and didn't know anyone in the games industry. So before Greenlight, the idea of being an indie game developer was simply not possible at all. However, Greenlight did happen, and with it came the possibility of making PC games and making a living. So when I first announced the game, I quickly submitted it to Greenlight. I wrote all the text, made the page, made some cool GIFs, and so on. I remember the response was pretty good, the game looked decent back then, and people seemed to really like the concept behind it. However, back then the queue to get through Greenlight was still huge. You needed thousands upon thousands of votes in order to move up the list and finally get accepted. Again, with me being just a random kid with no connections and no concept of marketing, I couldn't really get that many votes. So when May came, and my design was complete, and I felt the game was ready for release, I hadn't been accepted yet. So I did what every other small indie developer did back then, which was to simply release it on my own website. Now thankfully, back then Humble Bundle already existed with their extremely useful Humble widget. Without that, it would have definitely been a pain to handle all of the payments, distributing the game files, but thankfully, through that widget, it was very easy. So I polished up the website, made a trailer, and released the game. And, well, you can probably guess what happens when an unknown game from a first-time unknown indie developer in a tiny country launches a game. The answer is, well, pretty close to zero sales. I think on the first day it sold something like 5 copies, and then on the second day a whopping 20 copies, and then back down to 10, and then 3, and so on. So very quickly it dropped down to zero. Now like I said, that was a really interesting time, so I was really happy to have made a complete proper PC game exactly like I wanted, but the end result of 6 months of work was something like 300 bucks. So it seemed that despite all of my efforts, my dream of making it as an indie game developer wasn't really going to happen. One interesting thing was how the game did get an article on Rock Paper Shotgun, which was really awesome. Back then when I first thought of making PC games, two of my main dreamlike goals were to get my game on Rock Paper Shotgun and get it reviewed by Total Biscuit on his WTF is series. Sadly that second goal never came to pass. So that's what happened when I launched my game. I was happy with what I produced and sad with the financial results. For a while that was a pretty dark time, I mean back then I had dropped out of college about a year before that so I really didn't see much of a future for me. When I first saw Greenlight, I saw a possible feature, and then when I saw zero copies, I saw that possible feature disappear in front of my eyes. But then I did see a glimmer of hope. I looked at my Greenlight page, which was getting a slow trickle of upvotes and simply did the math. 
If the votes kept coming in, then it was only a matter of time until I had enough to reach the top of the list and be approved. And if I got on Steam, then I would get a second chance at success. Once I had that thought, my brain clicked and that's when I felt that fire again and that feeling that it was still impossible. So I went right back to it. I was going to improve the game as much as I could in the time that I had. So that's what I did over the next 5 months. I fixed a ton of bugs, polished a ton of things, added more features and improved it as much as I was capable at the time. And then it finally happened. I got the email that said the game had been approved for release on Steam. So that's probably the best email I've ever gotten. My plan for a second chance was finally coming to fruition. One of the more interesting videos I've made is the 200 days in Greenlight video. It's on the Endless Loop Studios channel linked in the description. It shows the graph as I went through Greenlight along with some comments. I pretty much took a screenshot every single day and then made that video. So it's really cool to see the progression if you want to see how things were back then and definitely give it a look. So the game was accepted, which meant I had access to the Steam backend. Then it was still a ton of work left to do. I had to make the complete Steam store page. I had to learn everything about how Steam builds work, which was really complex and really confusing. That definitely took me several days to finally understand how it works and upload my build. And once I uploaded it, I immediately tested it with my own account watching my game from the Steam client. That was yet another great moment to see a game that I made going through the Steam client. I mean, I spent most of my childhood playing Counter-Strike, so I remember playing 1.5 and hearing about this new program called Steam that was going to be required for future Counter-Strike versions. So I got Steam many years ago right as soon as it launched since it was a requirement to play CS 1.6. Little did I know that many years later I would have my own game on that little program. So getting the build uploaded was really tricky, but I managed to do it. Then I wanted to do the best work possible, so I wanted to add achievements and all of the Steam features, so yet another challenging thing. Figuring out how on earth does the Steam API work, making all the achievement icons, writing all the names and description, and setting up all the code to trigger the achievements. I definitely felt this was my one true chance, so I did all I could just to make it work. And then finally, after all of this, on November 8, 2013, the game was launched on Steam. So in terms of results, it actually did surprisingly well. Back then, Steam had fewer games coming out every day, so a game which looked interesting and had a unique concept did stand out. In that first month on Steam, the game sold about $15,000. So in that first month, I made more money than I made working on Flash for over 5 years. And it's obviously several orders of magnitude more than I made when I launched the game on my own website in May. Now, depending on where you live, $15,000 might not seem like much, but here in Portugal, that's pretty much a full-time income. So at that point, indie game development became my official job. Now, if you saw the Game Dev Journey video, then you know that things didn't go so well after that. This is a very volatile business, and I've certainly had my ups and downs over the years. But still, for the time being, the game was very successful. Design-wise, I'm still very happy with it. The field of view mechanic is still very interesting and unique even today. The sequel, Survivor Squad Gauntlets, is still one of my favorite games I made despite being a financial failure. Another really cool video that I made was the game development time lapse. It shows the game being built over time, starting completely from scratch and going through all of the code being written and all of the assets being added. It's really interesting to see all the mechanics being added, all the levels being created, the world map being generated, the visuals going from temporary placeholders to the best that I could make at the time. So yeah, really interesting to see it all come together such a long, long time ago. Check out the full video linked in the description. Now, that was 7 years ago, which honestly feels like a lifetime ago. Since then, I've published 7 more games, wrote something like a million lines of code, learned a ton about game design, programming, and marketing, and I made this channel with now over 300 videos, sharing what I've learned over all that time. So that's the story of how I made my very first PC game. I covered my whole game dev journey in another video. That one covers how I started making IRC games back when I was 10 years old, then eventually found Flash, and finally, 7 years ago, I got onto Unity and made my very first PC game. If you haven't seen it yet, then definitely check it out. That video took a long time to make, but I'm really happy with how it ended up. Alright, so I hope my story has inspired you and provided with some more detail as to what indie game development is really like. And my message to you, wherever you are in your journey, is to keep it up and keep making games. We all start from nothing, but if you persevere, I am sure you too can grow and find your success. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. 
like the video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.